Bangladesh is a fast-growing, developing country. It is expected to become a middle-income country by 2020. Bangladesh has plenty of rivers, yet safe drinking water is becoming scarce due to water pollution, salinity, and widespread arsenic contamination. Salinity and arsenic contamination of surface and groundwater are spread over the whole country. The northern and southern parts of Bangladesh are in an especially alarming state. In Bangladesh, 14% of the households do not have access to safe water. 46% do not have access to improved sanitation facilities. Sanitation means development. One US dollar invested in sanitation generates a return of five US dollars. Although open defecation has been reduced from 42% in 2003 to 6% in 2009, hygiene is still not well practiced in Bangladesh. As a result, diarrhea and other water and foodborne diseases occur frequently, especially among children. Scientific evidence and observational studies show that improved hand washing and safe stool disposal prevent outcomes like diarrhea and increase health benefits. Although there is a growing understanding of the drivers of hygiene behavior, some important gaps remain in research. There is hardly any research about how effective which interventions are to improve food hygiene in developing countries. Hence, it is promising to carry out so-called randomized controlled trials of food hygiene education. Thus, it can be determined how hygiene practices and daily routine in homes, schools, and workplaces can contribute to improving the health situation in households. This study was conducted by Mohammed Manarul Hassan, a PhD doctoral student from Bangladesh, working at CEF in its Watson project. The study area where the randomized controlled trials were carried out consisted of two northwestern rural districts in Bangladesh, Rashahi and Nauga. This area is called Barindra Belt and suffers from a lack of ground and surface water. Drinking water is very scarce in this region. The groundwater level is far below the national average in Bangladesh. The households in these areas are marginalized because their access to safe water is far worse than in any other parts of the nation. One of the solutions for these problems is establishing deep tube wells, which is very expensive. Governmental organizations such as the Barindra Multi-Purpose Development Authority, started to supply groundwater for irrigation, as well as drinking water purposes. Some households in these areas have access to tap water, others have not. Our prime objective is to compare the health outcomes between the two groups. Research can thus make a contribution by identifying how food hygiene education affects the health investment behavior of rural households. The study design was based on two clusters of sample groups. One group had access to publicly supplied drinking water facilities, and the other group did not. Each sample group consisted of 16 randomly selected villages, each with 16 households. In the end, 512 households were selected for the trial, split up in 256 households for each sample group. The households included children under 5 years of age. In the baseline survey, we collected data about households' hygiene practices and other water sanitation and hygiene-related information, as well as data about the health condition of the children under 5. The treatment was a combination of three measures. How to maintain food hygiene on a household level. First, an experienced trainer 
was hired to conduct food hygiene education. The training was initially conducted in 16 villages. Later on, another 16 villages were covered. <laughs> Second, a poster was given to the households to hang in their dining area. Third, E. coli testing of the water and food preparing utensils was conducted. After implementing microbiological tests for three successive terms, the results of the tests were given to the households afterward to determine the impact of the food hygiene education. Uh, this experiment, food hygiene education, has clear impact on water quality hygiene behavior and on child health in the uh, two districts of Russia and Noga in Bangladesh. And uh, we have seen that 24% of 512 households could reduce their E. coli level to zero. The percentage of stunting and underweight of such children has been reduced significantly in this intervention. The research was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, DAAD, and the Foundation Fiat Panis. Various institutions such as BRAC, IFPRI, and ICDDRB in Bangladesh provided support and logistics for the survey. The collaboration with the Institute of Biological Science Lab in this research was extremely helpful. <laughs>